I witnessed the birth of my third daughter just a month after 9-11. As parents, of course, we were overjoyed, but also acutely conscious of the terrifying new world into which he'd suddenly come. When the Twin Towers melted before our eyes, so did a great deal of transatlantic confidence. Britain shared the horror with you and, and backed all American military efforts thereafter. 67 of our citizens died on that day. Gone in that poisonous, choking dust cloud was the trust of believing that nothing quite so evil could ever happen over here. Every hope, every wish, and every certainty of safety began to ring hollow after that awful day. A totally wicked crime against a whole way of life in the West had been perpetrated in Manhattan, and the repercussions were inevitable. For when the innocent become the real targets of terror, the cruelest form of fear takes over. It starts to eat away at the core of civilized society. Trust itself, for when you can no longer be sure you're safe, then you realize that being afraid is the new norm. Even on the day itself, London and Londoners knew that we would probably be next, and we were. My little girl will very soon be 10 years old, but at school, they don't go out of their way to teach children anything at all about what happened on 9-11. Perhaps as a nation, we've become unnecessarily squeamish, opting to say nothing rather than risk causing offense. Religious fundamentalism, and all its intolerant extremes are deliberately left unexplained in Britain's schools. Well, there is a campaign to change that. The 9-11 London Project not only helped to bring a piece of very striking modern art to our city, made of twisted steel girders reclaimed from the rubble of the Twin Towers and unveiled here just a few days ago, they are also promoting the whole idea of a much clearer, better education. We may have learned to live with what happened, but the next generation deserve to learn why. This is Ed Boyle for CBS News in London.